welcome. It is a wonderful Friday morning. Today is the 13th of October, 2023. A unique Friday in the month of October. A Friday when everything is going to work just as wonderful as it does in every other day of the month. So bask into the day you are given and enjoy it. For this day is once in a month, in a year, in a century. Hi, Ryan. Good morning. It is wonderful, absolutely amazing to be here this morning. And to hello, Azim. How are you? Nice pics with you and your mom. This is so nice to see you are a son that spends so much time with your mom when you get an opportunity. Great, great. I love this. Um, so today we are here because it's 8 a.m. and we are ready to go. So there's two of you and here comes Lisa. Good morning, Lisa. Um, listen. And that's what it is. Listen to retain and to apply. And that is something we don't always do really good. Hi, Loretta. Good morning. Yes, as in, it's really wonderful to honor mom. It's amazing how that works for us, you know. Anyway, we mothers will take any crumbs you hand us. But when you spend time with us, we love that very much. So I love seeing you and your mom spending so much time together when you're in the city. So keep doing that. These are memories you cannot ever forget. And they will sustain you as you go through life. I know that. I remember my memories with my parents. So let us look at where we are this morning. Um, hi, Julie. Julie, how are you? I said, listen to retain and to apply. And I'm going to really push your, your buttons this morning. I am going to force you to see it as it really is. Good morning, Yuko. When you are supposed to listen, check in while you are, while your thoughts are going where they want to go. Check in with yourself. When we are meant to listen, why is it we let our thoughts gallop and we believe because our ears are open, unplugged, and we turn on our, what do you call that thing anyway, hearing aid, if we have one that we're actually hearing? And we are listening, but we are hearing. Are we listening? There is a difference, you see. Because the art of listening is to retain some information and then to apply it. So when I do a, a, a workshop, especially not a workshop so much, when I give a talk and I, I start it off with, hey, why are you here? So I walk on and I, you know, I say, good morning, good night, whatever time it is. And I say, listen, you are here because you chose to be here. Or maybe not. Maybe a friend told you, go listen to Tess Marie. She's going to talk about the five pillars of prosperity. You are here because you maybe know of the five pillars of prosperity and you want more. Or you're here and you're just curious because prosperity only means wealth and money to you. But this woman is telling us to be prosperous. Good morning, Belinda. Lovely. Nice seeing you. Thanks for the Thanksgiving um, <coughs> greeting from Tehran. I really appreciate that. Um, so, <coughs> sorry, everybody. So that's how I, us I usually bring it out to say to you that great. You are having a wonderful time and you came here to hear me talk. That's what I start my talks, my, my um, motivation and talks with. And I ask you to listen. I ask you to just realize you're not going to agree or you're not going to receive everything that I say. But the listening to retain and to apply is the purpose why you are here. You wanted something. So your phone is on, your cell phone, it's on silence, your head is down, and you're answering while I am speaking. I do not care because you paid to be here. It's not my business. My business is to do my best and stand in front of you and tell you what I believe and what I think and what I can offer to you at my highest possible level. Your job is to listen and to retain, to apply. You're here for a purpose. Whether you were driven, forced to, or you were just you fell into this place, or somebody gave you a free ticket. But the point is you're here. You came with a notebook and a pen, and you're busy writing. 
And I'm asking you not to leave it on the seat when you leave tonight. I'm asking you not to leave it in your car and never see it again. Or forget it on the bus. I'm asking you not to dump it on the dining room table amongst all of the others you did over the years and leave it there. That's what I'm asking you not to do. You came here for a purpose. You don't know. You just know you were here. So listening and retaining, then to up, listening to retain, is there's a difference. Because even when, look, let's look at the religious part. We go there to listen. No matter who you believe in or what you believe in, you go there to listen. And when you get there, while the thing is going on and all the listening, you're criticizing the persons in front of you. You're thinking that their dress is too short, too tight, too narrow, too big, they're too fat, they're too skinny, they're this, they're that. You, you, you are thinking that you have to go home and prepare breakfast or dinner or lunch. Yet you went there and we keep saying on the surface, not deep, it's community. We go there to be part of the community. Wonderful, wonderful. And here we are. But you leave there. And on the way out, you only stop to greet the most important person in the room, the priest. You make sure you shake his hand. You will not shake the hand of the person who is not properly dressed because you do not know if their hands are clean. But do you know whether the priest's hands are clean? But you are going out. You get to your car and if somebody were to say to you, what was the conversation about today? What was the gospel Today, what was the epistle? What was something? What was the sermon on about today? Oh well, I think, and and that's how you go. But that is not the right way to listen. That is not how we listen. We are not supposed to listen like that. We are not supposed to listen to take everything. But if you are somewhere and you are driven to be there now in the moment, you came because there is something you need to hear. If the urge tells you, boom, you, you check in and all of a sudden you check out, that's okay. It doesn't matter. You might have word, one word, and that word might be listen. And later in the day, Someone is, something is going on and you are not listening and something triggers you. Remember you heard that name, that word today, listen. That's why you have to listen. You cannot listen if your, your mind is busy. And what I'm asking you to do is ex exceptionally, exceptionally hard. It's difficult. It's challenging. It really is challenging. To listen, because you you have to focus, is shifting that mind, that thought, and hear. How do you do that? You can see when somebody is hearing you, or when somebody is listening to you. That person might not be chatting with you while you are speaking, or chatting with somebody else. That person will have their concentration on this. I remember Belinda and I would be in some things together and it always, and you could too, and it always used to marvel me at these people who spend all the time chatting when they came to listen to somebody. They're in the chat, they're greeting the dog, the cat, the rat, everything they can find. And I'm saying, well, what did you get here for? What did you pay to be here for? Because you need to take something from there. You came and for a purpose. Something brought you there. Whether you stumbled in, you fell on your head and you got there. Good morning, Nadi. Morning, Lisa. Morning, John. The point of the whole thing is that you are there. You are listening. Take something and apply. That's one of the reasons I ask you. Did you get a nugget, a pearl, or a diamond? What? Which one did you get? Which one is the most valuable one for you? You listen, retain, and apply. You can do all. You cannot do all. You cannot absorb all of, even in these 30, 30 minutes, even in a 57-minute shot that I do, you cannot get anything. 
But one tiny little thing is enough because all it is, is that is the needle that you can thread to pull it out. Getting over the then, sun is infection. Back at the gym at five. Oh, I'm ready for today. <laughs> Sinus infection. Good job. You're doing well. Yeah, things are working for you. You'll, you'll conquer. Persistency pays. So when you're listening, listen for something. When your brain is gallivanting and it's taking off in the direction of the rabbit hole with no return, only an entrance and you cannot come out of there, you have to stop and pull it back and say, I, I came here for something. I need to find that something. That is the energy of the emotion you must bring to yourself. What am I listening to today? Why am I here? There's something I need. Otherwise, I wouldn't be there. That's why I said hi, hi to Belinda. I haven't seen her for a while. She's extremely busy, but she dropped in. And I, and I know she's one person that always says you have to listen. That's because she is human resource person. So she knows that. Your activities are okay. But you have to listen. Even while you're doing it, you need to be able to listen. What am I using now that I got from what I went to listen to testimony speak at a seminar or workshop or whatever I do that thing? You, are, you came, you registered, you took your time, you showed up, you wrote notes, and you had several aha moments. You paid money. But guess what? Most importantly, you paid with your time. Can you get that half an hour back that you're giving me this morning? Can you? Those of you that hang on, can you get that three minutes back those of you that came and ran away. Can you get that back? No, you can. Because it will not come back. But if you are able to retain something from that half an hour, that three minute, that 10 minute, and then you apply it to your life, it is worth, it has worth that time. The value is immense. There's no way they can count it because you can keep ripping from it forever and ever and ever. When somebody says something to you and you hear it or you listen and you heard something and you, or they, they gave you a, a, a pointer and you, you took it or when you're inspired and you wrote it down, lest you forget it and then you apply it look at the results see what you do what happens because a set when you register for a seminar or a workshop or, or you go to hear somebody speak or you're listening on youtube or somewhere whether you paid or you did not pay you have invested and when you invest you need a return on your investment I heard somebody said that to another person one day. I need a return on my investment. He was referring to investing $10,000 to somebody that is a fabulous, amazing speaker and all of that. $10,000. And when he came out of it, he expected a return on his investment of $10,000, but he didn't get it. So he was saying, I did not get it. I wonder if he got it, but what he was expecting was more than he paid for. $10,000 is a lot to give to somebody who is going to train you to be a public speaker. But what do you expect? A return. Were you given the tools? Did you hear exactly? I'm not going to put you on the stage. But I'm going to give you the tools so you put yourself on the stage. Did he listen? Did he hear that? Or what he got there, is he going to attempt to move and to do it at the library, at the Rotary Club, at the church, for the kids? What? For free. The return on the investment does not happen right away. So when you listen, listen well. 
if you purchase stocks and bonds, that's a long-term investment. If you purchase a GIC, that's a short-term investment, a guaranteed income or term deposit short-term. If you invest in stocks and you took that investment and you paid for it, somebody said, get that stocks, you got it. You are going to have to weather the storms of the market up and down. You see, if you do not get it, when you look at the news and you see these lines wiggling and wiggling and wiggling, that is the market is going up and down. It's volatile. But if you stay invested in doing it, you will end up winning at the end 10 to 15 years. The same thing to that little bit of information you gathered. If you insist on using it and pushing it through, you will get the results eventually. My friend with the $10,000 investment should have decided, okay, I have the skills. Where do I go? I, go to, I send a thing to the library. I did that. I go to the library to talk. And sometimes where I go to talk is not the nicest place in the city. It's not even easy to get to. I live in a kind of a secluded community on the lake. Fine. And I would have to go from the south where I am, southeast to northwest. So it's all across the city to an area I'm not familiar with. But they asked, and I want to train because I learned something I want to apply. So I go to practice there. I'm sharpening my axe from the little bit of information I gathered from somebody else. I retained it, and I know I apply it. Anywhere I get to apply it, I apply it. I apply it every day with you. I get the information and then I give it to you because it's first to me. It comes to me to teach me. And when I realize, wow, you can't keep that. You need to let it go. Somebody wants some part of it. Listen, retain, and apply. Um, this time, is, it is not coming. It, this time you put into it, it's not coming back. To it, it's not coming back. What did you learn from it? Can you remember? That time is not coming back. That is the only non-renewable resource we have. It doesn't come back. We're not going to get it back. No matter how hard we try to make sure we get our time back, we are not getting it back. So if you're going to be there to listen, harness your thoughts to listen. When... Who was it? I said, we have 70,000 thoughts in a day. I said it to somebody. Oh, yeah. I had to pick Kylie up at daycare. Her mom was stuck on the train. And she said something to me, and I can't remember. I said, well, this, the amount of thoughts we have in a day is over 70,000, and it's the same that we had 20 years ago, or it's the same similar thing. And the lady was shocked. She goes, really? No wonder I don't remember anything. There's so many to go through. So that's what it is. Make some of those thoughts rememberable. Because that time you spend there, you have to say, I was there. I heard this. Then I used it to help myself. I went to listen to, I went to church and the sermon was that. Or somebody said something. Or when that person read that part of the, of the scriptures, it meant something to me. You should be able to pull it with you, like threading a needle to see where it, where it leads you. That's what listening is. Listening is remembering something when you are in the moment doing something. Why am I here? Ask that question. If we can all... Remember the aha moments? Aha. How do we remember them? By writing them down as soon as we get up an opportunity to or reciting them as we go. Why is the same thing. You use it 
if you keep swearing and cursing and always using words like that, that becomes part of you. And no matter what's going on, you're going to say it. Because you have rehearsed it for years. You sharpen your axe on using these derogatory words whenever you choose to. You listen to yourself and you change what you do not like from what you just heard. And that too is investing in you. Apply the aha moments and be consistent in applying those aha moments. Hi, Kia. Do not stop being consistent in applying the aha moment. When you are listening, listen with your mind. Ignore your air. It doesn't matter. They say you have two of them. That is why we have two. You notice we only have one tongue. We can, we can speak so much. But to retain, we have to listen so much more. My father said to me, when you are listening, when you go somewhere to learn, he said, shift your brain. He said, bring it forward and put it forward so that it is hearing what they're saying, so that you are forcing your brain to pay attention. So what you learn stays with you. I always tell you about my children. My son in elementary school was a big fish in a small pond. And I would say to him, Michael, aren't you studying? And one day he looked at me and said, Mom, if I listen in class, why should I study? From a child's mouth. I remember him saying that. And I question the teacher, why is he getting all these grades? This boy just spends 10 minutes doing some homework. Then Glenn Scully comes along. They have a project. It takes 15 minutes. And Vanessa's project takes three days. And they're all playing street hockey. Well, his things are always right. And I'll go, whatever. So anyway, but he said to me, if I listen, why should I study? Is that a lesson for all of us? If we listen... All we have to do is apply. Listen and apply. Retain it and apply. From a mouth of a, I don't know what, grade five, six, one, somewhere around there. So being there is not enough. Bring all of your thoughts there. Make sure those thoughts you have, have to do with where you are. Make sure those thoughts you have is grad gathering what you need, separating the wheat from the sheaves, choosing the best beans to cook. You might have a big bag of rice. In the Caribbean, when they cook rice, they don't just take the rice, wash it, and dump it in a pot. They sit there, they spread it on a tree, and they make sure they take off everything that's not good. They're separating what any little dirt or seeds or corn, something that's not in there before it goes in the pot. They're choosing the best. So when you go somewhere, choose the best for you. Listen to retain and apply. Good morning, Peter. Listen to retain and then apply. Choose to shift your brain forward. Make sure your brain is forward. I know um, you can't move it. Yes, you can. You close your eye, you concentrate, and you shift this, your brain, wherever it is, you make it come to rest right on the tip of your forehead. That way, you're paying attention. You know if you're giving teaching something, you know those students that are hearing you. Their mouths are open. Their eyes are zero in on you. They, they bend their body towards you. They support their face with their hands. They're into you. And that is because they realize they must listen to retain and to apply so that that changes their life. That is how it has to be. When we are learning, it's not all that stays with us. It's the, what we need that will stay with us. You all know that a conversation happens in a family. My father said this, 
my mother said this, and you put all the children together, and every person in that family would have heard something entirely different from the others. Do you wonder why? They only got what they were supposed to get. The only thing that is left is what we do with it, how we apply it. If you confront them, they will say, he didn't say that, she didn't say that, she never told me that, why didn't she tell me that? And, and that is what will happen. So that's why you have to let everybody have what they got. Do not take yours and say, this is what happened. So that's what you should have. No, 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 no. Number one, go back to inception or conception. You were born at a different time, a different way, a different place. You were, all of it is different. Why does, you, do, does it have to be just like you? Why? It can't. They cannot get what you got. It wasn't theirs. What you got belonged to you. And what they got belonged to them. If it was meant for us to all be the same, then there would be one race of people looking the same. No difference in height, weight, features, color, and language. Instead, we were given choices to choose. Um, there are people that, like, you see Peter? He's from Malaysia, but he's teaching Japanese. He went to learn that, to teach it. That made, so he, he was different, but he chose something that can, he can use somewhere else. That's what it is. We are all different. We get tiny bits to retain, and those tiny bits, like the lettuce seed, if we drop it in the soil, it will grow. But we have to apply it to our life, apply it to where we are. Listen to retain and to apply. That's the only way we are going to get better at what we do. When, do not fill your plate with more food than you can chew, than you can take. Because you will have to spit it out or you'll have to leave it. So do not get all worked up because the 14 things you listed to do today, you only did one. Accept it. That's the one I needed to do today. Rather than do that, listen and choose one or two. Listen and use the information you have to succeed. Those you know you can do and win, go there first. Listen and retain information, apply it, and you see success. It propels you to listen more intently the next time. So now you have more that you can retain and apply. When you're polishing a shoe to shine, you use the, when you put, apply the polish, it dulls the leather. You can actually see the polish on the leather. But when you start to buff it, that's when the shine comes through. It's only as you buff your mind, more will come through. So if you are going to go somewhere, to a lecture, to a seminar, to a workshop, listen and retain and apply it. Just be consistent in applying what you listen to. When your brain is gallivanting down the rabbit hole, pull it back and actually talk to your brain. Say, listen, I came here, listen to me. You see the word? We came here to learn. Let us stay together. I need you to listen so we can retain something that we are going to apply so it changes our life. It's, it's your brain is your team. Is part of you. It's your team player. So listen, retain to apply. So wonderful people, I 
don't know how you feel about this. <laughs> so I know. Um, how are you feeling? What did you do today? Did you, what did I talk about today? Can you remember something you can take with you? If you can remember something and one more for a reason. Yes, we do. If you can remember something from what I said today, write it out. Just put it, write it in your phone, write it somewhere. Write it in bold letters, highlight it. And see what you can do with it. Because you might be able to do something amazing with it. Because every time you listen, the whole idea of listening is to be able to retain some of what you, you got. But it's no point you walk around with it in your mind and you're not applying it to anywhere in your life. Come on, you can do better than that. You paid for it in time plus money or only in time. The two of them. Which one is most valuable? Your time or your money? Guess what? It's your time because you can't get it back. Have a great day. I love you. I am happy and grateful to have had the honor and the privilege to be here with you today and to give you something to carry through to the weekend. So those of you who are going to church on Sunday, <laughs> remember to listen, retain, and apply something from that sermon. <laughs> and look at the person that nobody talks to today at church and say, hello, how are you? Just for the fun of it. Give a little bit of the fragrance you have. So somebody else might, that smells good, that feels good. Remember, a smile goes a long way. Have a great day. Love you. See you on, some of you see you on Saturday morning, 11 a.m. The classes start. I am all excited about that seminar on affirmations. So let's get this going. I, I know it's going to be fabulous. I am pumped up and ready to go. Have fun, everybody, and enjoy your weekend. Enjoy your family. And guess what? Be selfish. <laughs> and enjoy yourself first. Do something for you that no one can do for you. Think. And do something for yourself. Have a great day. Bye-bye. Oh, let me see who's here. Hi, Belinda. Thank you so much for coming. Your fabulous friend and Julia, thank you for coming and hanging around and and. Kia and Peter and Jean and Lisa and Lisa and Loretta, thank you so much, wonderful, amazing human beings for coming and spending the morning with me. See you guys on Monday morning and see some of you tomorrow. I am all excited. Have fun. Bye, everyone. <laughs>